<laughs> my name is Rebecca Bendick, and I work at the University of Montana. Um, I think it was a complete and total accident by crashing into Roger Billum in the hallway. <laughs> and he's a person who, you know, I think of the field of geodesy as being quite dynamic. And to me, he exemplifies dynamism encased in a little human vessel. So um, I've always been interested in the landscape and the world around me. And geodesy is a fantastic way to do that because it's great for people with a short attention span. You get all the big picture of geology, but it happens in real time, so you don't have to wait 100 million years for an interesting signal. I found, uh, so the question is, do I call myself a geodesist? And I think that is a really hard question to answer. I, people always ask me what I do and I never have a good answer even though I know that question is coming. Um, I guess I would call myself a geodesist in some ways but there's a level of kind of meticulous quantification inherent in geodesy that I don't think I'm very good at. So I more think of myself maybe as a geodynamicist or just a slinger of wild stories. <laughs> So I uh, was an undergraduate major in biology and I stumbled across, as I said, Roger Billum and uh, he really showed me how exciting and interesting this act of measuring the earth and in particular measuring how the earth changes in real time could be. So I guess um, in the early 2000s or very late 90s I started doing um, GPS geodesy using kind of old-fashioned Trimble geodetic instruments and I've been doing that more or less ever since. So the research questions I think that were an initially addressed using traditional geodesy and and then space-based geodesy were really ones of kinematics so how does this chunk of the Earth or the atmosphere or the oceans move relative to this chunk? And not necessarily the why, but I think the really exciting future of geodesy and, and the one I'm focused on in particular in my own research now is, is why? Why does this happen? What is the, the cause of these movements of this bit compared to this bit? And then maybe even more exciting, certainly more practical, what are the implications of the motion of this bit relative to this bit, and what does that mean for human communities? Yeah, so uh, 30 years is a long time span for me. I think I mentioned I have quite a short attention span. <laughs> so I'm going to say at least over the past what, so 15 or, or 20 years maybe, the really exciting technical advances facilitated by UNAVCO are, are putting together global data sets. So both on a scientific level and on a kind of culture and philosophy of science level, this notion of sharing globally huge data sets, comparing signals, comparing processing tools, and comparing our understanding from place to place globally is a real innovation I, that really can't be underestimated. Like gone are the days of Newton sitting under a tree and getting hit by an apple. Now it's a matter of terabytes and terabytes of information about the earth pouring in at us and, and how do we use those in a sensible way. So it's not a specific technology but it's a kind of philosophy facilitated by advanced technology. But then of course on a more really specific level to the UNAVCO mission the ability to watch and see and sort of hear and touch and feel the Earth moving dynamically around us transforms the field of Earth sciences. It's not this ancient, slow, creepy, crawly business. It's happening under our feet and we can see it and we can measure it and exciting, dramatic things happen, are happening all the time that we can see. So to me that turns geology from this kind of very slow, st 
Bell where it stayed science into one of the most exciting and changeable and, and dynamic, if I can use that word, fields in the sciences. Yeah, so again, how it has geodesy changed over 30 years? I think the simplest way to say it is gone from being, you know, quite serious and solemn and a matter of refining things at a very esoteric and quantitative level to being very dynamic, very exciting, seeing new things like episodic tremor and slip and slow earthquakes and post seismic and, and the atmosphere interacting with the solid earth all these things happening as we stand here and talk to each other. So it's gone from being like serious slow measurements to kind of wild and exciting. And, and to me, that's really inspiring scientifically. I don't know where it's headed, but it's kind of fun. Well, so I guess I jumped the gun. I think the future of geodesy is hard to guess at, and that's what makes it really exciting. You know, if it were just a matter of, let's say, traditional measurements of the gravity field or the shape of the Earth, which is how we're taught to think of what the definition of geodesy is, then it would be kind of an incremental improvement in precision. But it's not like that at all. Right now, people are downstairs and in the room thinking about, are there these humongous signals in the Earth system that we haven't even named yet, haven't even seen yet, and if so, how do they work? What do they mean for things like natural hazards or climate change interactions or the stability and resilience of human communities? And, and to me, it's wide open. I, I wouldn't even guess what the future holds, except to say that every time people develop a new sensor or a new way of processing data or a new way of combining multiple data sets, we actually see entirely new Earth phenomena and that's so cool. No, it's just that it's a really fun and exciting time to be an Earth scientist. So. Not a geodesist? A geodesist asterisk. <laughs> a geodesist plus? Can I do that? <laughs> yeah, perfect. Thank you.